And uh, I'll ask you, if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to the book of Matthew, and we'll be in chapter 5. We're actually just before chapter 6. So we'll be in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 43 to verse 48. Verse 43 to verse 48. It's the very end of chapter 5 of the book of Matthew. And if you know your scriptures, you know that Matthew chapter 5 through 7 are the Sermon on the Mount. So we're in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. And we'll begin reading here in verse 43. Of course, our Lord is, is preaching. <coughs> and He says here, You've heard that it's been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And Lord, this morning I, I seek, Lord, to, to preach of you, dear God. And I, I need your help, and I ask you to help me. I ask you, Lord, as well, that as we look at our own lives, as we look at where we go, that we remember to look for you, Lord, and listen for your guidance. I pray, Lord, that you would help us even this morning, hearing of your word, and hearing of preaching. Uh, Lord, that we appreciate the good gifts you've given us. Uh, and Lord, stir up a desire in us, uh, Lord, that we would love you even more and follow you even more. We ask you these things, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. Let me see it. I want this morning to preach to you the perfect Father. Now, I, I realize that you love your own fathers according to the flesh. That is to say, the Father who bore you into this world. But no matter how much you love your own Father, He wasn't your earthly Father. He wasn't perfect. Now, you, you might not have anything bad to say about Him. I don't have anything bad to say about mine. But no earthly Father is perfect. But we do have a perfect Father. The very last scripture itself says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is it perfect. You don't worry, you'll learn. Perfect. And this word perfect here speaks to being complete and whole. And it speaks to you and I about being complete and mature and being whole. Even as our Father is whole and complete, our Heavenly Father is the perfect Father. You see, we have a natural desire in us to look after our fathers according to the flesh, our earthly fathers, and to learn of them. Every child has this desire in them. We were talking before church about how these little ones will look up at, at adults, and they only call one their father and mother, but they'll call a lot of them Papa or Mama. They'll do that a lot. But, but they'll look at one and call it Dad, or call it Father, or whatever they call it. You see, we have placed in us, by God, a natural desire to be as our fathers. Uh, you see, for God has given to fathers that that is how we learn some things of Him. We learn about authority through our fathers. Uh, we look before, Because it's our father's role uh, to enforce whatever the standards are, the rules are uh, around the house, wherever the barriers, the boundaries are, it's the Father's role to say, we don't go past this. We don't do these things. We do these things. We don't do those. We say these things. We say, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. And, and we say, yes, sir, and no, sir. We don't say these things. Uh, these are the things we always do. We wash our hands before we eat. Uh, we go to bed when we're told. It's, it's given to the Father to be the authority behind these commands. By nature, it's given. Uh, and so from this, we learn of God. And we learn of His authority. We learn of responsibility through our fathers. We learn because we see our fathers work. Uh, and we see how they are given to take care of their families. Uh, and we learn about consequences and responsibility. These serious lessons in life we learn from our fathers. Why? It's so that we can understand our heavenly Father. Because if we don't have a good understanding, and it's proven, 
that if a child grows up without a good understanding of these things they learn through their father, without a good understanding of authority, without a good understanding of responsibility, without a good understanding of work ethic, of understanding consequences for our actions, without a good understanding of fairness and equity, the child has a difficult time of it as they grow up. If they cannot learn this uh, from their father, uh, hopefully they can learn it from another male figure, from a grandfather, uh, from an uncle, from someone in the family, for they need these lessons. Because it's from here that we learn uh, of the attributes of God, our perfect, our perfect Father. But this morning, I'm not going to keep you long. I can preach on all of these things. On the authority of God. On the responsibility of man. On the need to work. On, on, on the need to be fair and equitable. I can preach on all these things. And they're worthy of preaching. They're attributes of God. They're things we need to learn of Him. But what I want to preach on this morning is the one that's dealt with primarily in this section of Scripture which we read. And that being love. The love of the Father. You see, this is Father's Day. And the Father that I wish uh, to give praise to and honor to and thanks to is our Heavenly Father. And the thing that I thank Him for the most is His love. Don't get me wrong. All of the attributes of God mean something to me, mean a great deal to me. His holiness gives me, it gives me guidance. I know where I'm wrong. I know where I'm right. Uh, by His holiness, by looking at Him. I, it, it gives me a reason to go on and to work and to strive, seeing how that He has always went on and worked and never quit. But especially what helps me through the day the most is His love. And to know His love, especially His love for me. And as we look at our Heavenly Father, look at His love, this is what will help you, I believe, the most. The most. I know no attribute of God which is mispreached more than God's love. Taken out of character. Taken out of context. But if we understand the love of God as it truly is in here, we understand something about our Heavenly Father that will cause us to desire to be like Him. Just as an earthly child desires to be as their, as their earthly father is. The more we understand His love for us, the more we'll want to be like Him, not unlike Him. It won't cause us to be selfish. It will cause us to desire His will if we really understand His love for us. So if I can this morning, I just want to cover about three things. About the love of our Heavenly Father. And, and, and how that we can look toward that and strive to be like Him. For after all, the last thing I read was, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Jesus has said, Strive to be like your heavenly Father. Be like Him. So first I see in, in verse 44 especially, how that God's love is unrestricted. It's unrestricted. Jesus said here by saying to you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Now I'm going to ask you, who did He tell you to keep your love from? Nobody. Nobody. But if we can have a love that will extend that far, if we can have a love that will extend to those that hate us, have you ever been mocked for any reason? Sure you have. Uh, you know, children can be very happy, but they can be very cruel. Do you not remember coming up as a child how it, your own playmates sometimes would make fun of you? Every now and again it happens. And, and what's our natural reaction? The, the reaction of a child is the same as the reaction of an adult. We just hide it better as an adult. We get mad and we get upset. And we want to strike out. We want to lash out. Uh, and we cannot say honestly that what's in us at that time is love. For our, for our playmates when we're children, our love for our fellow man. You see, this isn't natural to man, but this is what we're commanded to have, is love that reaches to all. Love that reaches to those who make fun of us. Those uh, who, would, who would deny us our rights. Those who would deny us an opportunity to gather together. Those who would deny us uh, our 
peace and comfort, safety. We should love them. There are movements going on in this nation right now. There's a lot of upheaval. There's a lot of disturbance. And there are people who think all manner of things. There are some who think that you are a problem if you're a Christian. There are some who think that what you believe is oppressive. Should you love them? Absolutely. Absolutely. All the way to the uttermost. What should come from us if we're to be as our Father? It's the same love the Father gave. And as Jesus was on the cross, and He looked at those who crucified Him, He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What should be on our minds when people revile us and cast, cast accusations against us, we should remember that they don't know what they're doing. If they don't have the Spirit of God inside them, if they've not been born of God, then they're still yet the children of wrath. And so they still yet have hatred and anger in them. All they're doing is, is, is the will of their Father, the devil. But we should love them. Why? Because God's love is unrestricted. Our love should be unrestricted. We should love those that are close to us. We should love those that are far away from us. We should love those that we know are are, are related to us and those that are unrelated to us. Those that are like us, those that are unlike us. We should love all. You don't have to agree with somebody to love them. You don't have to agree with what somebody thinks to love them. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to even tolerate their behavior to love them. You know, if a policeman has a duty to go arrest somebody, can he arrest them and love them at the same time? Certainly can. So we don't, we don't have to agree with everything, tolerate everything. We don't, we don't have to believe everything everybody else thinks in order to love everybody. We love them because they were made in the similitude of God. Our Father made them. And so we love them. It's an unrestricted love. I read in verse 45 again about the love of the Father. It <clears throat> said that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. <clears throat> For years, I thought that meant blessings and curses. I thought the sun was a blessing and the rain was a curse, but it's not so. If you don't think rain's a blessing, go without it a while. Both of these are blessings. God sends the sunshine and the rain on the good and the bad, on the just and the unjust. And we should do good in an unbiased fashion. I said it's unrestricted. It's available to everybody. And tied in with that is it's unbiased. You know, <clears throat> children argue sometimes among themselves. And you say, and they'll say, your mama's favorite. Well, your daddy's favorite. Do you remember any of those arguments? You know it's not true. Uh, every child is their mother's favorite. And every child is their father's favorite. Can I tell you that our Heavenly Father loves you as much as He loves me. And what I thank God for is He loves me as much as He loves you. He loves us without bias. He loves us without a favorite. He simply loves us all. That's why it says it's about how He calls us the Son of uh, causes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Do only Christians breathe? Do only those who have been perfect today enjoy the meal that is before them? Oh no. The good and the bad, the forgiven and the unforgiven all receive the blessings of God. And we then, in our giving, should you give to your brothers and sisters at church? Sure. Absolutely. Should you give to those who are lost and without God? Sure. Absolutely. We should have an unbiased love. It should not hurt our feelings that we would give to somebody who would waste it, who doesn't care. We should just simply try to help where we can. Try to give where we can. Try to give a word of encouragement if you don't have a dollar in your pocket. Try to tell somebody that God loves you. 
Try to be a help in an unbiased manner. The last thing I want to cover, because I told you I didn't want to keep you long. It's Father's Day. I want you to spend time with your family if you're able to. Verse 46 to 47 describes not only an unrestricted and an unbiased love, but an unearthly love. Jesus here said, For if you love them that love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same. The publicans uh, were crooked. Uh, we know them as ta tax collectors. They did more. That was one of the functions they served. But they were known uh, for being crooked. They were known for being unrighteous. So Jesus said even the unrighteous like their own. Even the unrighteous salute their own brethren. And in verse 47, if you salute your own brethren only, what do you more than others? For do not, did not, do not even the public and so. What he's saying here is the love of God is more than others, according to verse 47. And the love of God, verse 46, you see, has a reward. What reward have you if all you have is the earthly love? What are you more than others if all you have is the earthly love? But what we're looking for is a love that's unearthly, a love that's spiritual, a love that comes from God Himself and not out of the natural emotions of my natural body. What I'm looking for is that the love of the Father come through me and go out to others. And that I will love them unrestricted and unbiased, regardless of who they are. As a matter of fact, maybe even love them more if they're unlovely. Love them more if they receive no love from anybody else. Let me be the one who loves them enough to give them the best gift I have, the best thing I have, the most important thing I could ever give them. Let me give them the name of Jesus. Let me give them a treasure more important than silver or gold, green dollar bills. Let me give them a treasure more important than health or wealth. Let me give them the name of Jesus. Let me give them the news, the good news, the gospel, that there's a God in heaven who can forgive them for their sins, who can take them in and adopt them into His family. Let me give them the good news that they don't have to die without God, but they can have Him. They can receive Him. They can be saved, saved from their sins, saved from destruction. They can have the joy of God dwelling in them and in their soul. And if I have that, I can give that to them. I can't give them what I don't have. But if I don't have a daughter, I can give them that. And you can too. You can love this world so much. You can love the people in this world so much that you can give them the best gift that you could ever give them. The most important thing that you have. You can give them the gospel. You can help them along. Is it all right to help them in the natural body and natural needs? Surely it is. But don't forget to give them the most important thing of all. The good news of the gospel of Christ. Why? Because your father gave it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I thank God this morning for my Father in heaven on Father's Day. And I pray you, be you therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Not only should we learn of His attributes of, of a discipline and authority, work ethic, not only should we learn of these things, we should, but above all, we should learn of His love and His love for those who don't even love themselves. Go out and love others. Show them you love them. And tell them you love them. And give them that gospel that you have to give them. That's what I have for you this morning. Happy Father's Day, fathers.